Last time I saw you, we read the book Hide and Squeak. Mostly it was about a little mouse who was hiding from its parents. For, for art, you're going to be designing your own illustration based on that book that has at least one mouse hiding somewhere. The setting is up to you. A setting, setting, S E T T I N G, is the location and place a story or work of art takes place. For instance, my location here is the shoe closet. These two mice are hiding in the closet playing hide and seek. And this little poor guy, he can't find him anywhere. The location here, let's look at some more examples. The setting. Setting here is the backyard, or actually it's the front yard. And they're hiding behind a tree. The setting here is a bush. A rose bush. This is totally fine. You could do a picture of a little mouse hiding underneath a, a flower. Over here, the setting is the garden. And when we step over, the setting here is inside the house. Ooh. If we look inside, there was a bath scene that I thought was really cute. Where is it? There we go. I thought this was adorable. The setting here is the bathtub. And the little mouse in the next page, I think it was, he's hiding underneath the towel. It is up to you where you want to hide your mouse. Our medium for this lesson is going to be watercolor pencils. Once again, a medium is a fancy way of saying art tool. When I use more than one art tool, let's say I use crayons and watercolor and oil pastel, that will be mixed media. It's more than one art tool, but you're only using watercolor pencils. These are really cool. They're a little bit neater than watercolor. You color it in with these, then you wet it with water and it turns into watercolor. The thing you gotta know about these is when you, if you want to mix colors, you need to put them together. So for instance, if I want to go in here and color him in, there's a little bit lighter here, just like that. I'm gonna go over with some white to make it lighter. I know you can't see the white, but trust me, it is there. Over here, I might outline this part brown. Maybe add some orange. No, let's do salmon. Just a little bit here like that. And then I color the rest of this in all the way white. I'm coloring very gently. I might go in now with some orange because I want to blend orange and brown together. Some orange right here. Anywhere there's shadow, I'm going to put some brown. Once I wet it, that's going to blend. Let's go ahead and do this here, a little bit like that. See how it turns into watercolor. The 
this is mind you this is only the first layer once it dries i'm gonna go back and add a second layer to make it even neater that's so cute i forgot the paws this video up and color in using different colors or using watercolor pencil this will not work with regular color pencils do not mix them it has to have a brush on it otherwise this will not work notice how these all have brushes on it this is a watercolor pencil all right all right i'll take you a moment and walk you through my process when i'm coloring with watercolor pencils i want to keep one thing in mind value value is the lightness and darkness of a color for instance i started here with yellow but i also have some pink anywhere there is shadow i'm going to put a little bit of shadow with darker color so when i wet it it looks like there is a shadow casting over it the light's coming from here so this part will be lighter i'm going to go in maybe add some white on top so it'll be lighter than the rest the bottom here is going to be all in shadow because that's not where the light is the darkest part same way over here. I might use some black. Just a little bit. Black goes a long way. Don't want to use it a lot. Anywhere that's touching the ground is going to be shadow. So, let's start with the little mouse here. We have some shadow right here. Maybe a little bit shadow around here. The light's coming from here. So this part will be light while this side is darker. Now I'm going to go in with my other color. Brown. Very gently color that in. When you're using watercolor pencils, you want to use at least two colors on top of each other. So that way, when you wet it, it blends nicely together. So I have brown. Next, I'm gonna use the salmon color. You can also use yellow. Usually mice have a lighter part in the middle here. So that's why I'm going in with this light color to make that white. The whiskers will also be white. With a little bit of shadow. Then the face is going to be brown. And once again, when I wet my stuff, it's going to turn into watercolor. It's beautiful. Uh, okay, I'm missing a little bit of shadow here. His arms facing there, so we'll have just a little bit of shadow. Not a lot. So, I wet it. You need a lot of water. And notice, as I wet the black, it turns into watercolor. You can spread it around. reason I'm washing my brush routinely, I might have some black on it. I don't want this part to be black. So that's why I'm going in and washing it occasionally. So this is going to be brown now. If I go here and wet that now, it's going to have brown and yellow. That's not a good color. So, if I wanted to make a turquoise using these colors, 
I will use blue and green to make that together. Once again, these are only the first layers. Once this is dry, I'm gonna go back and add a second layer to give the texture of the mouse's fur. All right, let's wipe that sock. So once that dries, I might go back with some darker blue and black to add some value inside that sock. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this video up so you can see the rest. When you are coloring with regular color pencils, you don't want any white showing. This will not be acceptable usually, but with watercolor pencils, you don't want to color so hard because then it will be very yucky when you, once you wet it. So the vet, it's better when you leave some white showing through. Because once I wet that, all of this is going to be pink. And all of this is going to turn out to be a lighter red. If I want to be a dark red, I'll go back and add some more red. But I don't want a dark red. Over here, I have a coat of white watercolor pencils. When I mix that together, it will make a nice sky blue and so on. Something else you could do in your artwork is consider incorporating a speech bubble. Speech bubbles are used a lot in graphic novels. Think about what your mouse is trying to say while they're hiding. Here it says, he, 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 you'll never find me. He's kind of cocky, doesn't think he'll ever be found. Think about that. You could say, oh no, he found me. Something simple like that. All right, this is going to need a second coat. It's very satisfying.
that's pretty much done. I just gotta wait for it to dry. Then I'm gonna do a second coat over here. I might do a shadow of purple, a second coat of pink over here, some shadow right here, or maybe some orange. I could go back and add some flowers on top of those mittens once they dry. This needs another coat of brown, maybe some orange to make it match this one. See how detailed that one is versus that? That's kind of boring. And then it's just my background. They're in the closet, so this would probably end up being a mixture of orange and brown. Over here, I might have a purple rug or like a fuzzy rug, something like that. We'll see, I haven't quite thought about it yet. But that's what you're going to be shooting for. You're making an illustration of a mouse playing hide and seek somewhere. You can do two mice or you can do one mouse. It is up to you. But think of a creative way of how you can have your mouse hiding. They could be in a cookie jar. They could be maybe in the garden like you saw in the book. Maybe they're hiding underneath a pizza box. Think about that. All right.